Okay, so today we're going to be using the Cat AMR Sniper in Warzone Solos. You guys know how much I love this gun anyway, but just recently I've been hitting some really nice shots with this thing. And uh, I woke up today and I was like, you know what, let's get some solos on the board. Haven't done some for a few days. Let's see what we can do. And uh, obviously built my little cat load out. I think I'm going to pair it with the, uh, the Basby sniper support. And um, we're starting off this round with a lovely little Solos underground cash run. You guys might have seen this in one of my previous videos, but um, you can tie four of these underground caches together and get pretty much all the money you need for a loadout almost instantly. So from just three of the caches, I've collected 14 grand. There are a couple of men around here, though. There is a fourth cache right here. I just heard a glass break. Thank God for this loudness equalization. Honestly, it really picks up some of those quieter noises. The guy's driving off over in the distance. He's just peeked out of the window over there. There he is. Thought I'd try and go for the bullet pen kill, but uh, didn't quite make it. And that's it. Literally load out within a couple of minutes of starting the match. It really doesn't take that long to get it done. And so many people still, I don't see many people doing this when the circle's over here. I thought it would be more popular in solos by now, but you can do four of those caches that quickly. Now, someone's obviously noticed that, uh, that I'm up here. There are a few men sort of roaming around here. And as you can see on the, on the minimap there, we've got a guy just to our left. And then one further towards the, the edge of the map. That guy on the edge of the map uh, hasn't moved. And... Um, yeah, pretty sure this guy's AFK. I mean, when you look at him when I snipe him, you'll be able to tell that this guy was uh, was AFK. Thing is, though, it's such a sheer slope. You do have to move quite close to the player in order to, to be able to see him. And he was blended in quite well. Black and white character. Black and white rocks, you know. That's our second kill. First with the AMR. And then there was just some shots down here at these two little... Uh, Ammo bunkers, I think that's what they are. And of course, me being Westy, mouse and keyboard player, we don't push buildings very often. We just don't do it. We just wait for people to, you know, come on out and, and let us know where they are. And then that way, I can get the kill from the comfort behind a rock. That's right. Some tactical holding. I went back and watched some of my Verdance videos, actually, and we, we coined the term tactical holding instead of camping. There's nothing wrong with tactically holding, guys. There's nothing wrong with it. Everyone out here telling you it's a bad thing. Footsteps. You could actually see that guy on the, the right of my screen as I came over the rocks. I just didn't notice him in real time. But yeah, like I said, went back and watched some of the Verdance videos and the amount of tactical holding we did there in solos was incredible. And you know what? I'm going to fully embrace it. I mean, it's my kind of playstyle anyway. I will sit at range. I will wait for someone else to make the first move so that I'm the not I'm not the one making the mistake. And then uh, we benefit from it. Right. Taking a PRD, we're going to hop over to the next rooftop. So four kills early game, which is always good. One thing I love with sniping is that sometimes you can just uh, not make yourself the target or you can just enter into gunfights that you're not sure you should be entering. I mean, that guy, the only reason I knew he was there was because there was like the the tracer going across of the sniper bullet. And that guy picked out the footsteps. That was kind of insane. This loudness equalization on PC, guys, you have to run it. If you have the option available... Just search up loudness equalization windows and just learn how to turn it on. Because if you can, you can pick up footsteps from so far away. It's such a benefit to run it. Nice armor break there. Always try the pen, by the way. Always try the uh, penetration shot. You never know when you might get it. But there you go. Six kills down already. And uh, here's high alert, as always, saving my life. Feels like a polemiot. That feels like a polemiot. Lots of bullets. Into the AO. I forgot the guy did that. <laughs> Always put down the mortar for uh, a little bit of cover. You never know, he might then get the, the warning on his screen and do a little bit of a wider flank. I'm actually caught with my, with my trousers down a little bit here. There's not much cover for me. 
guy's got tempered so he can play up quicker. Cheeky Thermite. A bit too far. The angle wasn't really with it for that one, to be honest. I really should have landed that shot there. But yeah, there's the reason I like this cat. The, the build that I've got anyway. Is it the Tac Force Delta Optic or something? I think that's what it's called. It gives me a perfect balance of range. So I can zoom in. It gives me a good zoom. But also, it doesn't hurt the ADS time too much. Enemy sniper. I don't recognise that player. Do you get the armour break? Enemy sniper here. Didn't get the finish though. I'm not in the best position, I've got to admit. The rocks are kind of against me because people could push up and over the top. I have got the cover. If I went right up against the rock, then I might be okay. But I am very visible, as you've just seen. Somebody just tried to snipe me from behind. I sort of took this opportunity to be like, right, let's move up to this buy station. Time for a little reset. Half the lobby's gone. 50 players left. Six kills. We're doing pretty decent. We need some supplies. Got myself a UAV. It's just finished pinging. I've got a second one in pocket that I've just popped off. And that green marker just in front is pinging this guy who was, for some reason, just hanging around on the edge of this rock here. It might be the same guy that I was shooting at earlier that I moved away from. Moving here. But I thought I'd make a little push. I do have the Basby as a sniper support. It's a decent gun. Got the armor break, ran out of damage range and recoil control with that Basby there. He kind of just disappeared. I think there's a gap in that wall right there. I think there's a gap. He's just down there on the on the right by the red container. I don't actually see him at this point, which is why I'm not looking at him. I didn't actually see him. So I, I got lucky there. I got very lucky because if he had a sniper, I think he would have taken me out. There's actually quite a few players down here. I don't know if you saw it on the minimap when I pinged off the UAV. This is another th reason I love playing with a sniper. People absolutely hate this, by the way. That you can just, you know, meddle in other people's gunfights with this sniper. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great playstyle because you're not making yourself an obvious threat. But if you can be good with your shots, you, sh you damn well should get the kill. Like, you deserve it if you can land the shots at long range. Headshots, at least. If you can land the headshot with the cat AMR and you get the down, you know, it's not easy to do, guys. It's really not easy to get those one-shot headshots every single time. You see a lot of the time, I'm breaking armor. I'm doing, like, body shots, like, upper chest, things like that. It's not easy to get that one-shot headshot every single time. But this sequence of events right here, I'm not really... I did take down the guy, but I didn't get the finish. These two guys are fighting, and I just make their life even harder than it needs to be. But the whole point is I'm playing solos, guys. There you go. Armor break on that guy whilst he's pummeling the other guy behind the pylon. Moving here. Guy behind pylon wins gunfight. <laughs> and then I mop up the pieces. One of the guys at least knew I was there. The second guy, Dougie Doug, that I just killed, he definitely knew that I was still up there because he ran away from me. He parachuted off the hill a couple of minutes before. And the other guy in the in the black outfit, I'm pretty sure that was the guy that was in the fire station earlier on in the round as well. So both of the guys knew I was in the area. And I ended up benefiting by one of them killing the other. And then I pick up the pieces. Can't say fairer than that. I think that was pretty good play. Gas is inbound. Marking a new safe zone. So I've moved into the low town here. It's not my favourite spot this, especially for sniping. Can be quite difficult. There is a player down on that green marker. They've been firing unsuppressed shots, and I've picked up a comms vest. So I now have, like, the bird's eye feature. Um, I'm making a move across the river, because I think this is where the circle's going to pull, but actually I'm wrong. See that tracer there? Gives it away. There's someone else sniping at this guy from a different angle. Those tracers, by the way, huge balancing feature for the snipers. Huge balancing feature. Mark the target. Get the armor break there on that guy. See what I mean about getting the, the one-shot headshot versus the armor break? It would be quite difficult for me to get a moving one-shot headshot on that guy. I need to aim a little bit higher. I could probably do it, but it would be just about as much luck as it was skill. Whereas the guy that's standing still on the rooftop. I mean, if you're standing still on a rooftop with a sniper, unless you're lining up a shot, which maybe he was, 
But those those examples that you deserve to get one shot headshot. If you're running and moving and you get one shot headshotted, well, that's just that's just part of the game, really. That's just part of the game. The only thing is, is somebody's got to follow up on that shot. Moving here. Yeah, those tracers on the snipers, they are a huge balancing feature. If someone just back follows the tracer and looks the other way, nine times out of ten, you can get the general area of where where the sniper might be. And sort of maybe half to two-thirds of the time, you're probably going to spot the player that's firing that sniper rifle. I think it's a great balancing feature, and I'm a, I'm a big sniper fan. I don't mind the fact that it's in the game. I just have to take into account that someone else or every other player in the area can see that vapor trail or that trace or whatever it is and they can uh, they can find me a bit easier so i thought this was a good spot to be but um right on the edge of zone with movement going back towards the southeast i was not quite as confident on that one and uh you're gonna see a nice little nice little gameplay moment here this guy coming in armor break didn't get the finish <laughs> Always with the trusty thermite. I love the thermites. Honestly, it's like my uh, it's like my classic branded feature of my Warzone gameplay, I'd say. So we're still on the low side of this circle. There's a lot of area further beyond. And that uh, counter UAV has just disappeared. Got the down on that guy. Just didn't get the finish because, of course, he's got a self res. But that's one thing in solos, again, I see a lot of people just sort of hanging around in the sky, sort of trying to have a look and see what's going on. All I can say is don't stay stationary when you're parachuting. Just, like, strafe one way, strafe the other. Do some circles, cut your parachute, re-enable your parachute, just to make you a harder target to hit. I think there's a guy, this is the guy on the roof, this sniper hunt guy that I shot. But, yeah, if you're ever parachuting, just don't sit still in the sky. Just keep yourself moving around. There's the guy on the roof. Now, I've got myself in a rather open spot. And I realise it's probably not worth the push. But this right here. Listen to the footsteps. That poor guy. I mean, he was full sprinting around. So, you know, the footsteps were clean. But my god, they, they picked up a long way off. That's the power of that uh, loudness equalization. It can be super beneficial. It's way more effective than that flex perk that they give you access to in, in the game. And loudness equalization is like a window setting, by the way. I, I put it in the same group of just running a better set of headphones or, you know, playing the game on your TV versus playing on a pair of headphones. That's what I think, anyway. Got to cover off this area down here. And there we go. Once again... I alert saves lives. Literally just pinged me and I was able to move away quickly. Got the armor break on the guy. One ping on the thermite, which is a bit strange. It must have been like a splash on the thermite or something. And there we go. Got quite lucky there. Probably should have played it up whilst I was moving backwards with the rock in front of me, but hey. As it turns out, it doesn't matter. And then I thought I'd take the height here as a sniper. And there's not much cover. I've been up here a couple of times before. In fact, there's no cover up here whatsoever. Unless you go prone. And then the only cover you've got is that if people are on the ground, they might not see you. That guy is still on the roof. And watch this. How did I miss that shot? That was a guaranteed one-shot headshot right there. And I missed it. So bad. We make up for it by killing Anne Flank with uh, with a one-shot headshot. Gas is moving. So we've got the gas moving on our butt here. I want to try and keep some height. And you might have noticed the player at the end of the barn here. Fair play from them to start things off. I get the armor break, but I don't get the down. I get hit by the airstrike. And then this is just me not playing this right. That was my fault. I had a durable gas mask, and what I should have done is instead of running, I went run to the right and then ran to the left. Maybe what I could have done is gone back along the wall behind the hut and got myself into a further position across the circle. Maybe that would have been the best way to do it. 
So we get sixth place. But my boy right here is running almost exactly the same build of the AMR. Which, by the way, was brilliant in this round. I absolutely love the AMR. But this is your boy at the end. What's his name? XB Livid. He's got eight kills. He's got 18 people watching. I didn't realise I had so many people spectating me, by the way. Um... Nice one shot there, or the armor break. Then he gets the red hit marker for the kill. Perfect. I like the gold camo. I do like the gold camo. Checking his corners. Always got to check your corners. A riot shielder surprised him. <laughs> and now it's a 1v1 for the win. I'm glad he killed the riot shielder. That's a moral victory for everybody in the lobby. He's got 21 people watching him, he's got the high ground. There's only a couple of places this guy could be. Far side of the circle, on that rocky outcrop there. Down below him here, below these rocks, he could be there. And the only other place is by the water tower. Where do you think he is? He's by the water tower. I mean, for me, that would have been the area I picked. Little bit of a panic melee before he throws two stickies. Didn't hear any footsteps, so I wouldn't have thrown those. That's 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 hard to take there for XB Livid. And he gets taken out with the assassination as well. But we got sixth place, and I got loads of sniper kills, so I was pretty happy with that. Let's go show you the build in the uh, in the menu. So this is the AMR build that I use. I use the Nightfall Suppressor with the Zang Barrel and then the Spire Point Rounds. This gives you the highest bullet velocity you can get, 1,293 meters per second. That means that sort of in the mid-range, you don't need to lead your targets. At longer range, a little bit in front, and you should be absolutely fine. But this is the fastest velocity one-shot headshot sniper that you can get in the game. And then I run the Tactical Stock Pad, which gives us a nice little ADS reduction. And the, and the Forge Attack Delta. Again, this is personal preference, because I really like this optic, but it does also help to reduce your ADS speed. You could run the default optic if you wanted to, and then maybe you could run the Olay Laser on top of that to help reduce the ADS time as well, if you prefer a, uh, a longer range optic. But there you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you soon.